one of the ways you guarantee that prophecy will be fulfilled in your life is that you must first of all embrace the prophecy in embracing the prophecy what you are doing is that you are personalizing the prophecy to your context so you must begin to appropriate that prophecy to your daily living it's one thing for God to say something to a corporate house is another thing for everybody in the corporate house to experience it in their individual context. If you are going to experience it in your individual context, the first step is that you embrace the prophecy. You accept the prophecy as a word from the Lord and you accept the prophecy as a possibility in your own life. First, I believe that it is God that has spoken it to us. Second, I believe that this thing that God has said will happen in my own life. You must embrace the prophecy. Otherwise, you will have great promises from the Lord, great speakings from the mouth of Yeshua, great speakings from the mouth of the Lord, and you will never see it come to pass in your context. And it will not be because God lied. It will be because you did not embrace the prophecy. So one of the things that God said to us, critical, is that he will carry us on the wings of his spirit. His spirit will bear us up. And the thing about being born up by the spirit is you learn how to live life outside of the limitations of your mortality. You are no longer living by your own wisdom. You are no longer living by your own strength. You are no longer living by the arm of flesh. You begin to live by the support, the quickening, the help of the Holy Ghost. That's what it means for the Holy Spirit to carry you. So the Holy Spirit begins to help your spiritual life. He begins to help your prayer life. Begins to help your love for him. The Holy Spirit begins to provide you wisdom and insight that is ancient. Wisdom and insight that exceeds and is over and above the wisdom and the insight of men. You begin to live from a frame of reference that is supernatural. In that frame of reference, you begin to live your natural life supernaturally. And you begin to live the supernatural life naturally. You are born up by the Spirit. So if April is already coming to a close and the second quarter of the year is almost finishing, and you have not begun to experience these realities in your life. And you are a member of this house. The problem is not with the prophecy. The problem is that you have not begun to appropriate the speakings of God to your life. So everything we have been doing in these Wednesday services. In trying to sustain and maintain our deliverance. Is to give God the opportunity, the platform. To fulfill the things that he has spoken to us second critical thing that the lord said to us which forms a core of my personal prayer life in these seasons is that god said we will begin to look like our prophecy oh you don't know how powerful that thing is that we'll begin to look like the things that he has spoken concerning us that means many people in this year their shape in the natural will exactly match what God had in his heart and in his intention for sending them to the face of the earth. You will begin to look like your ordination. You will become one with the promises of God concerning your life. Very critical. But you know that Satan, your enemy, I've taught this over and over. Satan is your enemy, your number one enemy. He's not going to sit back and allow you walk into the things that are promised. So Paul will say things like, A great and effectual door has been opened unto me. But what happened? Many are the what? Adversaries. Many. Many. Not one. Many. To guarantee that even though the door is open, you will see that it is open. The only thing is that you will not enter. You will not access that place of transition. Because when the Bible speaks about doors, it's speaking about opportunities. Doors, like, like uh, openings, are like places of transition. You move from one place 
to another. So you will know, you will know deep down inside you that you are better than your current state. You will know that in your spiritual life, you should be doing more than you are doing now. You will know, you can feel it, you are, you are a spiritual person. So in your spirit, you will be feeling the weight of glory. The only problem is that you will not be experiencing it in reality. Because Satan will do everything within his power to make sure that you don't touch it. That you will be like Moses standing upon the Mount Nebo. Seeing Canaan lush and green. And you will die on this side of Jordan. And one of the tools that Satan uses is he attacks your spiritual life. Because the minute you, are, you identify with Jesus and you begin to build relationship with Jesus. What determines your reality and your possibilities is your spiritual life. Not your physical life. So if your physical life is thriving, you are bearing fruit in your physical life. If your spiritual life is dying, you will have no weight, no value in the realm of the spirit. So Satan has no problem with you making money. He has no problem with giving you a lot, bank a lot. Satan is only threatened when he sees that you are now committed to seeing that your spirit man develops. You are now committed to seeing that you are growing spiritually. That is what threatens Satan. So spiritual disciplines like prayer, like Bible study, he will do everything within his power to make sure you don't become a creature of habit. Because it's in habit, it's in habit that transformation is possible. If you don't become a creature of habit, you will find out that you are just doing many spiritual things, but your, your life is not changing. You are not growing. You are not developing. The way to translate spiritual disciplines and activity to faithful results is to become a creature of habit. Because in spiritual habits, if you begin to engage in habits spiritually, what you are doing is that you will dislodge the government of the flesh. Because flesh has gained government because of habit. The reason your flesh is potent is because by habit, you have trained your flesh to rule. So if you are going to break the hold of your flesh, you, might, you must also by habit train your spirit to rule. So if you don't bring a rhythm to your spiritual life, that you are just doing many spiritual things, but it doesn't have a rhythm, you will find out that you are busy spiritually, eh? but you will be dying. It's not translating to any victory. It's not translating to any supernatural life. You want to begin to see supernatural life? Then you must bring a reading. And that reading is forged by habit. Okay, I'm hearing somebody now. Okay, pastor, what is a reading? What is a reading? A reading, if you, if you want to give the direct English interpretation of reading, the meaning of reading. Dictionary will tell you that a rhythm is a strong, repeated, regular. Are you noticing the words? What's the first word? Strong. What's the second word? Regular. What is the third one? Repeated. Notice. Is a strong, is a regular, is a repeated pattern. Pattern of movement or sound. That's a rhythm. So when you see soldiers, left, right, 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 left, turn, right, turn, is a rhythm. Is strong, is regular, is repeated, and then it has what? A pattern. So it can either be movement or it can be a sound. I wanted to do an experiment tonight, but I don't have the time. I would have brought three choristers here to you. One tenor. One alto, one soprano. I don't think we have anybody that sings bars. No. So we'd have had these three parts. In music, you have parts. Right? And for 
music to have melody for it to make sweet sense to your spirit is that there must be a blend among these three parts so tenor soprano alto if only one is singing you might not feel the sweetness of the music but the meaning the three of them can find a rhythm find a blend and sustain it then it begins to pierce your soul some of you who don't know music don't even know that everybody that is singing in the choir is not singing on the same um, tone you, you are just hearing it and it's sounding sweet in your spirit you say there's a big sing but you don't know that some people are singing tenor some people are singing soprano some people are singing what alto but as it comes to you it comes as a rhythmic sound sweet to your heart and your spirit but it takes discipline to sustain it i was in the choir in fact i was choir master in my first life before god took over i have been choir master right and i know how hard it is for somebody to be in a crowd hmm? and you are to sing your part and you are hearing somebody else shouting their own part in your ear and then you have to sing your tenor and sing it with purity it takes discipline it takes habit many christians are struggling with the basic disciplines of the christian life and are not reaping the associated rewards because they've not become creatures of habit that is why the matter in these last two weeks has not just been praying. The matter is the qualifier. Always. That's the matter. Because in this matter now, it's not a matter of duration. It's not a matter of posture. It's not a matter of the type of prayer. Because you should know by now that we pray in the spirit. We pray with our understanding. We pray long we pray hard and when it's necessary we pray very loud but that's not the matter if you are praying long you are praying either in your understanding or in the spirit you pray hard you pray loud and you do not pray always you'll be a weak man and you see i found out by experience and i can teach you by experience that once you cannot sustain prayer as a habit hmm, Three things will characterize your Christian work. One, you'll be weak. Two, you'll be vulnerable. And what does it mean to be vulnerable? You are prone to attacks. You, are an easy, you become an easy target in the spirit. The third thing is that your, your Christian journey will be characterized by fear. Fear. Anything that is happening, you, you start to panic. But somebody who has made prayer habit... The thing about habitual prayer is spiritual alertness. Ooh. I feel a sweet presence. There's is, is spirit, spiritual alertness. You are alert. You are sensitive to the realm of God. Very sensitive. And once you become that spiritually alert and you become that spiritually sensitive, there's nothing that is happening around you that has the ability to shake the spiritual atmosphere of peace that you feel on your inside. The reason many of you are vulnerable. The reason many are weak. The reason you are no longer sure about your future. The economy has a way of making you depressed. Lack of money in your bank account can steal your joy. The reason that kind of fear fear of the unknown fear of the future has begun to creep into your soul is that you don't you are not a creature of habit and you know i've told you this year and i know many people have been joking with that thing i say study jesus repeatedly when you have read matthew mark luke and john take one week break begin again study jesus let the way jesus lived be a reality in your spirit that you begin to live like Jesus in this realm. That is the goal of the Christian life. No man, no man in this realm is the standard. The Bible says, looking away unto Jesus. Why does it say looking away? Because in Hebrews chapter 11, 
it shows you models of faith. Men, he called them in Hebrews chapter 12, a cloud of what? Witnesses. So he says, look away from the cloud of witnesses. Look unto Jesus. He is your model example. Your perfect example. Because these other models of faith, men, they had their own limitations. They had their own weaknesses. But Jesus was a perfect example. These men that were models of faith, the Bible says they died without obtaining the promise. Jesus has already reached the finish line. He has run the race and finished it. He has finished. He's at the finish line. So look unto Jesus. He's a champion already. He has made it to the end. 